Hey scientists, I wanted to conduct an experiment over force. <laughs> no, 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 not that kind of force. The type of force where one object pushes or pulls on another object. This push or pull can also change either or both objects' speed and direction. Let's say you play soccer and you're a forward, or the person who tries to kick the ball into the goal. And you kick the ball with everything you've got. The ball zooms off towards the goalie and... GOAL! Let's look again with our science minds activated. The moment your foot hits the ball, there is force. Force from your foot to the ball. In this case, the ball's speed and direction change. Let's go back to my experiment. Now that I know what force is, I want to measure it in action. Now when we measure force, we don't measure it in metachlorians like in the movies. We measure it in newtons. Newtons are just another unit of measure like grams, feet, or meters, but they're specifically used for force instead of length or weight. There are a lot of ways to experiment with force. You could kick a soccer ball and measure the distance the ball travels. You could set up a lever or bar lying across a pivot point and measure the force required to move the load or stuff on the other end of the lever, like a teeter-totter or seesaw. You could also use a spring scale. A spring scale is a device that is specifically used to measure the amount of force in newtons of an object pulling another object. Any type of experiment we set up needs to follow a certain set of rules though, so we know we will end up with results that are reliable. The main rule is that we want to make sure each experiment is done multiple times in the exact same way. So let's pull out our spring scale once again and let's set up our experiment. I want to see how much force or pull in newtons it takes to pull my big fat 600 gram science book across my table. Now I could simply put my book on the table, attach it to my spring scale, and pull it across. But then it would be really hard for me to compare my results to anyone else's. What works better is to have a clearly indicated start and stop line. To pull the book across at the same speed and in the same direction. And then to do my pull at least five times to get the most accurate and reliable results. Let's say I pull it five times and take a look at my results. Now I can average them out or I can identify any pulls that maybe look off when compared to my other results. These rules will help you get the best results from your experiment. Now, let's add in another term, work. Work is when a force causes the movement of an object and it is displaced from the object's original starting place. Let's look at some examples. There are a lot to choose from. You could push or pull anything, really. Pull your backpack across the floor, push your science book across your desk, or kick a soccer ball towards the net. All of these would be examples of using force to displace an object, and it'd be examples of work. The only catch is that if the object stops back at its original starting point, then technically the amount of work would be zero, because the item is not displaced or away from its starting place. So, if you start with a football midfield at the 50 yard line and kick it across the field, you've used force to do work. But if you then kick the ball back to the 50 yard line, the amount of work is now zero since the ball is no longer displaced. Let's take a look at some questions about force and work in an experiment. 